This video is dealing with Gantech Sports. In the previous videos, you have moved this goal back and forth. You also have a player that is trying to defend you back and forth. You also have this ball bouncing. What we're going to deal with now are um, these two procedures. This video will deal with dribble. The next video will deal with shoot. What are we talking about here? So here's this ball image sprite. And when we're dribbling, we want this ball to be like this, bouncing up and down. But this player is moving constantly back and forth, trying to get a position to shoot so the defender doesn't there. So if I move here, that ball needs to move to this guy and bounce up and down. If he moves it here, that ball should go up and down as well. Um, also, we should have a dribbling sound effect. And you can see here on the class page, I gave you this dribble sound effect here that you're going to need to save to your computer and use that to, it sounds like this. And once you play that over and over again, so I already have that on my computer. Let's go ahead and add that part in first. So we're gonna need media, drag in sound, I'm gonna rename that SND dribble. From here, I'm going to go ahead and upload. You can see that file there, dribble. So, when we're thinking about dribble, we have to think about a couple things. I'm going to play this sound, obviously. Um, this ball needs to go up and down. Um, so, that's one thing. We need to vary this position of the X and Y. Um, also, this picture should not be that picture. It actually should be this picture, the dribble picture. So we have to make sure this guy changes by changing the picture. We have to make sure we move this ball no matter where it is. So if I shot the ball, it should come back to this position. We also need to make sure that it's going up and down. So let's go ahead and start this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna make a procedure. We're gonna call it dribble. First thing we want to do is make sure that this guy's picture is equal to basketball player dribble. So I'm going to go to basketball player. Picture is a property, so it's a green block. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to put a text box in there. Now this part you have to make sure it's spelled exactly. See like it has dot dot dot, that means it's just too long. So so actually if I go and look, you could see there's my basketball assisted player. What I normally do is just go ahead and copy from my computer that whole thing and paste it in there. That way I know it's correct. If you don't have this name exactly matching what's in here, when you actually play your game, your player will disappear. Why is it disappearing? It's because it's looking for a name that you're saying, an image, but that image is not uploaded into your thing. So make sure you have that image uploaded and then you actually have this exactly the match. So if this was a capital D, it would actually disappear. So we got that part done. What that does, again, it changes this guy from this to this. Now what do we have to do? Remember we can shoot this ball. So the second thing we should do is move this ball to this position. Now here's an issue. We want to move it directly wherever this guy is. So if he moves over here I want it to be kind of in this area. We have to have it relative to this guy because this guy moves. So if he moves over here I need to move it to this position. Well this guy is here and you can see this area is his X and his Y. So if I said move this to this basketball player's X and Y position, it would actually move the ball here. And we actually don't want it here, we actually want it to be on the side. So what we have to do is say the basketball player's X position, and I'm gonna subtract the width of this basketball, which would put it here. Now, that's fine on the side, but we want it 
towards this area here. So this is the basketball player's Y position, You can because this is that Y line. And I want to add the height of the basketball, which gets the ball there. So how does that look? I want to move the basketball to, again, I want to do a plus and a minus. So minus for x and plus for y. I want the basketball player's x and y positions. So this is going to move me to the basketball player's x position. This is going to move me to the basketball player's y position. And remember these two only would get me here. But if I subtract the width of the basketball by going here, and here's my width, that in essence moves it to the side. So versus being here, which is this x position, that puts it there. Now, if I sub add the height of the basketball, to the basketball player is y. Ball was here, now I added that, it gets it there. And that's what we're looking for. So now, what if we actually shot the ball? The basketball has a speed. So when we move it back here, it's still gonna have that speed. In order to stop it, we need to set the speed back to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and do basketball, go down to my speed property, and we're going to make it zero. Another thing if we're dribbling is if I shot this and I actually made the goal, and you'll see that in shoot, that goal, that ball goes invisible. So if I move that ball back here, I need to make sure it would basically come, I moved it, but if it was invisible, I can't see it. So I have to make sure that visible is turned on. So to do that, we can go back to basketball. Go ahead to visible. I'm gonna do true to make sure that that guy turns on. The other thing I want to make sure that happens inside of dribble is our game varies. So this guy's speed actually goes faster when you shoot. Um, so we, we want to reset this guy's speed back to the goal speed. So I'm going to say CPU player. Anytime I'm dribbling, his speed should just be the normal speed, which is the goal speed. Also, one other thing, just like this player should always be dribbling, in our game, this guy could be that, or if he catches the ball, he's going to actually smush the ball like that. So if I'm dribbling, it shouldn't show that picture it should actually show this picture. So we're gonna make one last for that. CPU player, I just wanna make sure I'm gonna go ahead back to my, see I want to make sure it's that guy and not that one. So you're gonna copy that. and paste that in there. So one last thing we want, remember we added this sound effect and I wanna go ahead and play that. So if we tested this, then we could actually see what happens. First thing we're doing is making sure that basketball player is dribbling, we move the ball, we set the ball speed to zero, we make sure the ball is visible we make sure the computer speed is the goal speed, 
it's not moving faster than that. We make sure the player is in a defensive position and we play that dribble sound. In order to test this, we have to program this sprite when it's moving back and forth. So this is dragged. And we actually used this in our previous app, Sketch Artist. So I'm going to go to Basketball Player, I'm going to pull out Dragged. And what I want to do is, I only want to move his X position. He's going to move back and forth. So this guy's not going to move up and down. He's going to move back and forth. So I only want his X position. So before, we've used this Move To and it gives you to move the X and the Y. I just want to move the X, so I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to grab in my X. Now this part you're going to do on your own. Because you have experience with Sketch Artists, I want my player, when I drag them, should it be my starting X, my previous X, my current X. You have three positions, you need to figure that out on your own. But the thing that you do want to call in here is the procedure we just made called Dribble. So now we can actually test this on your tablets and see what happens. There's going to be one thing we're going to have to fix, but I want to show you what this does before we actually fix it. If you try to build and this block is not there, you're going to get an error. So remember, you have to figure this out. I'm going to add a comment here. Code this on your own then test your dribble. So let's go ahead and test this on the tablet and see what happens. So let's test our dribble. So here's the problem is the ball is not actually bouncing. We want that animation. So why is that actually happening? So you saw that the ball moves to the player, you move it back and forth, it makes the sound, but the thing, the problem we have is it just stays in its position. It's not going up and down like it's actually bouncing. So how do we do that? We have to create our very, its Y position. The reason it's only staying in one position is because in our dribble procedure, we're saying stay in this position, always move to this. So we want to vary that. In order to vary that, we're going to have to create a variable that we're going to change. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to call it ball bounce up. And it's either going to be up or down. So I'm going to make the ball bounce up equal to true. Now, I'm going to make a procedure that's going to determine if this is up, it's going to set it to this position, or if not, it's going to add 15 to it. So I'm going to go back to procedures. I'm going to pull out the second one because I'm returning my ball bounce up. I'm going to say here, I'm going to call this Y position ball bounce. And inside of here, if this is true, I want to return this, or if this is false, I want to turn the basketball's position plus 15. In order to do that, I have to change this every time um, this procedure is called. So I'm going to go to control, I'm going to do do, and I want to make it the opposite. So I'm going to do set ball bounce. So if it's true, I want it to be false. I'm going to go to not for my logic, and I'm going to say ball bounce. So if ball bounce is true, now it's not true, ball bounce becomes false. If ball bounce is false, it's not false, it becomes true. This changes this variable back and forth, that way we can determine where the position should be. So now I need a condition, if it's up I want it to be this. I'm going to go back to control, pull in my if block, and I'm going to pull this down to there because if the ball bounces up, this is the position I want the basketball Y to be in. Or else, 
So right now it's returning this position. If ball bounce is false, I'm going to add 15 to it. So it'll change and it'll actually look like this. So here, I'm going to get the basketball player, basketballs, current Y position, but I want to add 15 to that. So I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to add 15. So kind of explaining this. Ball bounce is true. That means I want it to be the highest position. It's going to be this position. When it comes back in here, ball bounce is not true. It's false. It's going to be that position plus 15. And that's going to give us our variance. So now that we have this position, we have an error here. You can see that warning. If I do show warnings. I remember I took this out of here. So how do I get that position? Remember, this is returning my Y position. So I'm actually going to go back to procedure. So I'm going to fill this in here. Now this gives me two different Y's. It's either going to give me this one or that one, which is going to allow my ball to be either here or here. And it's going to look like that. So let's go ahead and build this and test it so you can see the dribbling effect. Here's the app actually working. You see our guys are moving up there. When I drag, you can see the basketball is moving back up, up and down. And that's because we created that Y position ball bounce. So this, we've got our ball actually bouncing. We've coded our dribble. When we drag this guy, it should dribble. And that works. The next thing you're going to do is working on shooting. That'll be the next video.